Hi everyone! We have great news. We have released the new and improved version of Youth WooCommerce Advanced Reviews. We have completely redesigned the plugin and turned it into an all in one so you can now manage advanced reviews in your shop, email review reminders, and offer discounts to customers for publishing reviews. Before we get into it, let me remind you that we'll see links to the plugin, documentation, and live demo with access to the admin dashboard in the description below so you can go ahead and check it out. And now, let's get to it. Here you can see we have lots of products with reviews. For example, let's click on this boho yellow shirt. We have four reviews here. If I hover over the stars, I can see how many stars this product got in different comments and the percentage. If we scroll down, we have the review section here. The shirt has 4.3 stars total. We can see the stars here as well. And we have certain criteria here customers can use to review the product. We have quality, shipping, and size. We can see the reviews here. And above, we can see all the media files customers have attached to their reviews. We can see they attached a video to this review and a picture here. We can even reply to the review, mark it as helpful, report it, or delete it because I'm logged in as an admin. And we can see here, for example, that one person found this helpful. Now let's see all the options included in this plugin and how you can configure it to get this result. Let's go to the dashboard, do it, advanced reviews, and we're going to find all these tabs. We have main overview, settings, review boxes, modules, review reminder, review free discounts, emails, your store tools, help, and the option to collapse the menu. So one of the first things you might notice is that we have review reminder and review for discounts because this amazing new update includes the advanced reviews, review reminder, and review for discounts settings. Now, first off, we're going to start with the dashboard. Here we can see an overview of the total reviews, the review reminder sent, the average rating, the last reviews on the site, best rated products, worst rated products, we can also see what the products with the higher number of reviews are, with the lower number of reviews, and who the most active users are. And we can also see the last report of reviews here. Now let's go to all reviews. Here we can monitor and manage all the reviews created in the shop. We're going to find the product they left a review for here, the user that left the review here, the content, we can click here to read more, hide. We can also see the total rating for each review. In these three cases, you see the product review includes criteria customers have to rate. They have to rate ease of use, effectiveness, and satisfaction. That's why here it says average, because this rating is the total average of these three elements they rated. Unlike this case where we don't have any criteria and customers can just rate the product from one to five stars. We can see the date when they left the review. We can search for reviews here. We have bulk actions to move several reviews to trash, approve or unapprove them. We can filter reviews by rating here. We can search for a product, search by username or email. And here we can see all pending, reported and approved reviews. So we can access this section by going over to the dashboard, yield, advanced reviews, main overview, all reviews, or we can simply click here on reviews once we're in the back end. By hovering over this option, we can also see if we have new reviews or new replies. Now I can also click on add review. To add a new review myself, I can enter a title, the content, set the rating, set as helpful, feature, block replies, block review editing. I have my user information here, which I can edit, and I can also add files here. Then if we go up to the right, I can enter the product I want to leave this review for. And then here I have the review status. I can change it here and then save. Let's go back. So we'll see the same fields if we click on any of these products. I'm going to click on this product review so I can go edit it, change the title, the content, all of these here, add new attachments, change the user. I can see the product it was written for. And I can also change the status, update the review or move to trash. Now let's go back. Before moving on, let me remind you to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell down below so you know every time you publish a new video. Now, let's continue. Now, in settings, we're going to find three sub-tabs. We're going to find general options, user permission, and style and customization. In general options, we can configure the behavior of the plugin. 
will find options to auto-approve reviews so they don't have to go through your own revision to be published. You can allow anonymous reviews, that way guest users can also leave reviews. You can choose what the reviews will show, the full username or only the first and last letter. Right now we have full username as you can see here, but if I go back and change it to only first and last letter, save, let's go back, refresh, and there we go, just the first and the last letter. Okay, and then we can choose to show a tooltip with the graph bars, that is what we saw earlier. And here we have a notice to show in products without reviews. The message is no customer reviews available for this product. Be the first and leave your review. So we're going to see this in products that do not have a product review. For example, this product does not have reviews yet. Let's click on it and we're going to scroll down and click here reviews and we see there are no reviews yet. So here we have the text we just saw and here we can leave a review. We can choose the rating, enter the title, the review and upload files here and then publish it. Let's go back. Okay, and then we have the recaptcha options. So we can enable Google recaptcha to avoid spam reviews. You can choose which version you want to use, two or three, and then you can enter your site and secret keys. And then we have review attachments gallery. Here we can decide to display a gallery to highlight all review attachments like we saw earlier. Let's see that again here. We have all the attachments from all the reviews here above the reviews and we can choose to hide the attachments of replies from the gallery. Then we can choose to show pagination of reviews and the number of reviews per page. And last we have the Mandrill integration in case you want to use Mandrill to send the plugin emails. If you enable it, you'll just have to add the Mandrill API key. Now let's go see user permission. In this section, you're going to set the user permissions for publishing reviews. For example, you can let users publish multiple reviews for the same product, write a title for the reviews, edit them, delete them. In this case, we don't have this option checked, so they cannot delete their own reviews. They can also reply to reviews, vote reviews as helpful, and report reviews as inappropriate. Then we can highlight a review as helpful after a specific number of votes. In this case, we have five. We can choose who can report reviews in case you want to allow just logged in users to do that and not guest users and how many reports you will take to hide reviews. Then here we have image attachments and video attachments. As you can see in this new version, image and video attachments are configured separately. You can allow image uploads, set the maximum number of images per review the supportive file formats, in both cases this and this. We're using the most common file formats managed by WooCommerce, but you can add the formats you prefer. And you can set the upload size limit. Same options here for the videos. And now let's go to styling customization. Here we can customize the display of review boxes on the side. These are the sections where the reviews are shown. We're going to see all the possible review boxes next, but first let's see the options here. You can choose to show the percentage value and graph bars, the filter reviews in the model window. Let me show you that. So here we have five star reviews and four star reviews. Let's click on five stars and we're going to get a model window where we can see the review we have just filtered back to all reviews. So by clicking here, you can basically filter reviews by rating. Let's go back. So if I disable this option and save back, refresh, let's click on five again. That's it. I don't get a model window now. I just get the filter here, five stars, and I can see that one review that is five stars. And I can click on the button or here to clear the filter back. Okay, and then we can choose the position of the avatar and the name above or below the review. And then all the colors we just saw in the review box. Then we're going to find the badges section where we can decide if we want to show the staff badge on admin replies. We can set the label here, the colors, and also the feature badge here, the label and the colors. And now let's go up to review boxes. So here we can create advanced review boxes to show in our products. We have a general box first. This cannot be disabled and it's the one used by default on all of the products. We can click here to edit it. To edit the criteria, for example, we're going to see that next and to decide what we want to show. And below, we're going to find all of the review boxes we created on the site. We can create a new review box just by clicking here on Add New. It's going to be automatically added here below General. We can click here to edit it. But for now, let's delete this one. Delete, yes, proceed. 
and we're going to look through one of these boxes that I have already created. So let's click here on the Boho box. So I named this Boho. Here you can choose where you want to show it. We have all products, specific products, specific categories, tags, and all virtual products. In this case, it is showing the specific products and the product is the Boho yellow shirt, which is the one we were just seeing. You can also choose categories and tags here. And here's the option to enable multi-criteria. This is exclusively for the reviews in this review box. So customers can rate their products based on the criteria selected. We have quality selected, shipping and size. You can of course choose more than this and you can add new criteria here. I'm not going to do that now. So instead of just rating five stars, users are going to rate the product based on those criteria. Again, this can be found here and you can find how customers rated this here. This customer rated five stars for quality, two stars for shipping and four stars for size. Keep in mind that the total rating for each review is calculated as an average of all these criteria. So thanks to all this and all the kinds of criteria we can create that are relevant to the products we sell, we can make this review system more effective for those customers who are considering buying the product. Now let's go back. And last, we can choose to show the average rating box, graph bars, sorting options, the button to vote reviews as helpful, and the most helpful reviews tab. Now, let's go to the module section. So here we're going to find the review reminder module. So we can increase the number of reviews on the store by automatically inviting users to leave reviews after buying. And we can enable the review for discounts module so we can increase the number of reviews by offering discounts in exchange for reviews. These two modules are the ones we can see here. If I disable one of these modules, the tab gets hidden here. Let's enable it again. Okay, so now let's go to review reminder. We have three sub tabs. Let's choose general options. Here we're going to set the standard behavior for the review reminder module. We can choose to show a checkbox consent in the checkout page. That way users can consent to receive review reminder emails. And here you have the text. Yes, I accept to receive review requests via email. Let me show you that checkbox. We're at the checkout. Let's scroll down and we have it right here. Yes, I accept to receive review requests via email. This is optional, of course. We can check it to receive the reminders or uncheck it if we don't want to receive them back. Then we can choose if we want to send the review reminder for all the products in the order or just for specific products. If we choose specific products, we get to decide for which products we will be sending the reminders. For example, we could choose to send them for the first or last product bought. We have lots of options, products with highest number of items bought and more. Let's select all products again. And here we have the option to send the email a specific number of days after the order has been set as completed. Here we have one day after the order has been set as completed. Whenever you change these settings like I just did, you'll see this option to reschedule emails. And last, we have the Google Analytics integration, so we can add Google Analytics to email links. If you enable it, you'll need to complete a few fields to get this working. I'm going to disable it and now let's move on to email list. Here we can see the email reminders that have been sent. We can see the order they were sent for, when the order was completed, when the email was sent and what the status is. You can cancel the schedule here. We also have bulk actions here to cancel schedule for several emails at once. We can also filter emails by status here and clear the table by removing canceled or sent emails. And we can search by order here. We can also click here on add new to schedule a new reminder email to be sent for all orders placed or only for those placed within a certain time frame. And here we can enter the date. Now let's move on to block list. Here we can see all the customers who do not want to receive the review reminders. They can unsubscribe directly from these reminder emails or by leaving the checkbox to accept review request unchecked, the one we just saw on the checkout page. So when customers unsubscribe or choose not to accept reminders, they're automatically added here to this list. And we have bulk actions here to remove users from this block list so we can send them these email reminders. We can search by customer email here and we can add an email to the list here. Now moving on to the review for discounts module. In general options, we can set the standard behavior for this module. We get to choose if we want to send the coupon after the review was created by the customer or after the review has been approved. 
and in coupons, we can create and manage the coupons to reward users for their reviews. Here we don't have any coupons created yet. Let's just create a coupon to give users a 10% discount for leaving a review on any of the products I sell. So let's just name a 10% coupon. And here we have the triggering events. We can give users a 10% discount for just one review or for multiple reviews. If we choose multiple reviews, we need to set how many reviews we need the customer to publish to give them this coupon. We're going to select single again and the triggering products are going to be all. So I'm going to leave this empty to have it applied to all products. Same for categories. So by selecting single review, customers will get this discount only the first time they leave a review for each product. So the first time they review a t-shirt, the first time they review a pair of jeans and so on, but they won't get the 10% discount the second time they leave a review for the same product. Then in coupon settings, we can choose the discount type. We have percentage discount, fixed card discount and fixed product discount. We're going to leave percentage discount selected and it's going to be 10%. We can choose to offer free shipping or not. And then we can set the validity days. Let's set 30 days. So this coupon is going to be valid for 30 days. And then usage restrictions. You can set the minimum or maximum they have to spend in order to use the coupon. If it can be used with other coupons, exclude sale items and more. Once we're done configuring this, we can just save the coupon. And that's it. If we go back to coupons, we're going to find all the coupons created here with their name, what triggers each coupon and what's the discount type. Then in emails, we can manage all the emails sent by this plugin. So we have emails that are sent to the admin and emails that are sent to the customer. We can see what they're sent for. We can disable them or enable them. And we can click on this pencil to edit every single one of the emails here. We'll find three tabs to edit the emails. We'll find the layout section to edit the emails. We can select the email style here. The plugin includes three built-in styles. Style one is the one you can see here in the preview. We also have style two and style three. You can change all the colors here, or you can use the WooCommerce template. This one is the default style of WooCommerce emails, and you can customize the colors directly in WooCommerce settings. So if we go back to one of our built-in styles, again, we can change the colors, we can upload a logo here, and we can change the logo position. So you can see a preview of all the emails here. For example, let's see the review reminder email. This is the one that is sent to users to remind them to leave a review. So we're thanking them for the order and we're asking them to just take a few minutes to leave a review on the following item. And they can just click here to be directed to the product page and leave a review. And then we have your store tools. Here's where you can find additional tools to improve user experience, increase conversions and loyalize customers. You can find all these plugins to use together with advanced reviews, like for example, Ajax product filter to help customers filter products and find the ones they're looking for or Ajax search. So you can add an instant search form to your e-commerce and help your customers quickly find the products they want to buy. And last, we have the help tab where you're going to find any video tutorials we have about this plugin, a link to the documentation where you can learn how the plugin works, a link to the frequently asked questions to find answers to your questions, and a link to submit a ticket in case you need help from our developers. And that's it. That's how easy it is to configure this plugin and get advanced reviews in your shop. Okay, so that's how the plugin works. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up and we'll meet again for our next video.